Hey guys, welcome back to TSI. I'm Dave. I'm Joe. So we're out here today at the Cove in Gore, Virginia. It's good to be back in uh, the free state of Virginia, not in, well, you know where. Hell yeah. So we're doing a couple of drills today. You know, we're not fucking professionals. We're just kind of messing around, see what we can do. But part of what we're doing here is we're testing this magazine. It might be difficult to see at this range, but this is the SWT magazine or Schwarzen Waffen Technik. It's a Swiss magazine that I got off a sportsman's guide, or rather, Scott got off a sportsman's guide for about $8 ship. So we figured, hey, why not just give it a chance? Uh, initial impressions on it, they're good. Uh, it's a polymer mag. It seems to be fairly well made. It looks good in the rifle. It looks like it's got that, that futuristic shit going on. But what I did notice about it is that the polymer is significantly thinner than something like on a P-Mag. Also, it is a little bit annoying to load. It's actually, the, the spring in this is actually pretty stiff. But you didn't see me do this last night, but last night I was throwing it at trees and shit and wow, just we, we abusing beat the, it. Yeah, we beat the shit out of it last and I, night. And I just did a drill just a little while ago with it. Worked fine. So anyway, we're going to continue to test it today and uh, we'll see how it turns out. It'll be interesting. We'll see. Hell yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right, guys. So we're going to be trying an interesting drill today. Part of what is... Uh, Part of what's simulating an actual combat situation or whatever defensive situation is that you get your heart rate up. Once you get your heart rate up, that's when shit gets really, really real. So, very simple. I'm just going to be firing at these targets that you can't see off screen. There's still targets at maybe about 100 yards or so. I'm already out of breath because I actually did this drill. Practice first. Just going to run back and forth, do it times, and see how I do. All right, let's begin. That second mag was out of ammo. Oh well. See, it changes the whole dynamic when you start doing that. Holy shit. It was fun though. Hey guys, so as you saw the last drill that I did, uh, there was a malfunction, but actually it was related to the magazine. Now, in the beginning of this video or the video series, we're talking about two magazines. If I could show you here, I know it's gunfire, but seating this magazine is actually pretty difficult. The bolt was open at the time. I inserted it, and I didn't realize that it wasn't all the way in. If this were a PMAG or anything like that, it would have worked. What's interesting, too, is that there's a false lock here. It seems like it's locked in. Now it's locked in. So it's something to consider about these magazines. So what happened? Got it in like that. Didn't quite seat it, and then it didn't quite fire. See how the, how the thing is? That time, though, it did, it actually chambered the round, but last time it wouldn't even move. Kind of interesting. Anyway, still functioning well, though, but something to consider. Maybe over time it'll actually wear in, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to try the drill again, and I'll let you guys know. Fuck you. Damn, Mag.
of it. Jesus Christ. All right, guys, so it's been a few days since that last video, and as you can probably tell, I was um, pretty frustrated with the whole experience of using this magazine. But um, I want to actually talk to you guys and just explain some of the other little caveats. Really, really a final, a final thoughts video, I guess. All right, so let's talk about the magazine. Now, it was a little bit difficult to hear what I was saying in, in the first original videos because there was so much gunfire, but let's go over two main categories, pros and cons, and then we'll go into a third one later known as purpose, and that'll be very, very short. So let's go into the pros of this magazine. So as you can see, here it is. Now, since I'm back in the, in the non-free state of New York, this is a magazine which has no spring or follower in it. It is, in fact, a shell of its former self in a literal sense of the term. So, now that that's done, let's talk about my experience with the magazine. Let's talk about the pros. First, the magazine looks really cool. I like the way it looks. It's got a kind of a futuristic thingamajig going on with it. It's hard to explain, but it's got nice lines. Uh, it's just overall, it's a very, very... Very, very nicely put together magazine in terms of its look. If I was directing a movie or something like that and I needed a cheap magazine stick on my gun to make it look cool, yeah, sure, use these. So I guess one purpose of this would be a prop. I mean, if it works, it works, right? Uh, the second thing about it is that despite the fact that it has, well, let's talk about let's talk about the other main advantage. It's cost. It's eight dollars. This was eight dollars shipped to Scott's house originally. Now, because I've disassembled it, it's now legal in New York, so no worries about that. But anyway, it was $8 shipped to Scott's house, so that's another advantage. It's really, really cheap compared to AR-15 magazines, which can run from, you know, $10 to $14 to $30 at some points, depending on what magazine you buy. This is a pretty good deal. Another thing about it, it actually is pretty damn durable. I threw this thing around a lot, and when, even when I got home back to New York, I was dropping it in the backyard on concrete, and the thing still functions. I did notice, though, that what was happening over here is that when the spring is on, this base plate was coming forward like this. But because the spring actually, because this base plate is actually captured by the spring within, it never quite got off. I actually was trying to knock it off as hard as I could, and I couldn't do it. So it comes forward a little bit, but that doesn't seem to really affect anything. Okay, so now we've got those two things out of the way. It is durable and it is cost effective. And also it feeds very, very reliably. I didn't have a single problem with feeding. I had a problem with actually inserting it into the gun, which was the, the main issue of it. Uh, but in terms of feeding, fed absolutely fine. Uh, which again goes into the next point. Uh, the problems. The main problem with this magazine is that it over-inserts like a motherfucker, or as I would like to say, it over-inserts like a sailor who just got shore leave. Um, it just doesn't work very well in terms of that. This is the only magazine I've ever encountered in my life where it actually seats better on a closed bolt than it does on an open bolt in an AR-15. And the reason why it is is because this locking tab over here is, I guess for lack of a better term, out of spec meaning that when you put it in the magazine, it actually will skip right over the magazine uh, the magazine locking tab. It'll go too far forward into the gun. That is the issue that you were seeing in the video, where I was actually pushing it in, and then it was actually going all the way in to the point where it actually couldn't uh, strip around off because the magazine was blocking the bolt. That's, that's what, what was happening to it. So that's really, really bad. It's really bad. Uh, for a defensive use with this magazine, um, I would say that is, it is definitely no bueno, despite the fact that it is relatively durable and it actually does uh, seem to feed very reliably. If the thing won't actually close on the bolt or if you have to be really, really careful about when you insert the magazine in the gun because you might cause some kind of a problem, it's no bueno. You shouldn't think have to think about that. You shouldn't have to consciously make the effort, okay, well, i got to make sure it's in a certain location. 
What I mean by that is that when you stick this in the magazine, uh, in the magazine well, you lock it in and then you have to pull on it, even on an open bolt. Now, most AR-15s, you might say that, yeah, you have to pull on it anyway to make sure it's seated. But on, a cl on, a, on an open bolt, typically that isn't much of a problem. And you can, in fact, seat this without, you know, getting it to override or over insert. But it's not that easy. You have to really be careful. And when that adrenaline is pumping like the one you saw on the video, or my heart rate is really, really high, it's hard to be gentle. <laughs> it, just, it just is. Um, so, what exactly do I recommend this magazine for, and what is my overall impression of this magazine? Well, it's not, it's not the worst magazine, but I'll, I'll kind of sum up what my rating is. It's fucking poopy. It's fucking poopy. But there is a silver lining to this whole thing. This magazine, in my opinion, is a ditch it magazine, meaning because it feeds very, very well, you can actually put it in the gun and, you know, since you're in a controlled environment, you can make sure the thing locks up and all that shit, make sure it feeds, or make sure it chambers around. Then you can shoot it because we know that it, it fires reliably. Then you can ditch it and never have to worry about it again. You don't have to clean it up. That's, that's what a ditch it mag is to me. It's a new concept that I've come up. I might copyright it. I might not. But uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm kidding about that, by the way. But I would say that because I, I own this magazine now, that's what its main purpose is going to be. It's a ditch it magazine. Or you can even stick it in a cache or something like that and just make sure that it, it'll run. Just don't plan on keeping it. Now, I wouldn't say you should go out and buy a magazine for this express purpose, but for me, I'm kind of a cheap bastard. I like to make uh, as much usage as I can out of my stuff, even if it is kind of crappy. Um, that's what I'm going to be using this magazine for. It will never be a frontline magazine. It'll always be that magazine that I might stick in a gun and I don't really care about it. it it's such a, such a weird, it's such a weird magazine though, because while it, it, it appears to be durable in the sense that I abuse the shit out of this and it still works, it, it has that over-insertion issue which completely negates the entire usefulness of this magazine. It turns a relatively good magazine into something that is effectively fucking ri ridiculous. It's, uh, as I said, fucking poopy. Now there's one thing, if you have these magazines, there is a couple things you can do to actually improve functionality. Now will that make the magazine good? No. But it'll make it more usable. Right here in the magazine locking tab, you can see right here, you can see it's a little bit fucked up because I actually took a Dremel and I Dremeled it out because I noticed that if I made it deeper, it actually does in fact engage better. It better. Uh, I actually took so much material off that I'm worried about actually going through the other side at this point, so I'm not going to screw with it any longer. But like I said, it's not, a, it's not a primary magazine. It's not something you would carry into battle or any sort of defensive situation. It's purely something that you would either use for training or if, you're, if you need a ditch it magazine, again, you load it in your gun, you make sure the thing is okay, you're in a sterile environment, and you just fucking forget about it. Other magazines of this type, I would say, are the Orlite magazines from Israel, although those magazines are a hell of a lot better than this piece of shit. Um, and again, don't, don't think I'm telling you to go out and specifically buy a magazine for this purpose. It's, 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 it's stupid. I'm just saying that if someone handed you a box of these and say, Hey man, I want to give you these, a box of these magazines. Well, first of all, they probably don't like you very much. So you, you, you might, might want to take that as an insult. Um, they might be trying to tell you something. Maybe you got bad breath or, you know, um, you, you like to watch full house or I don't know, insert fucking terrible quality here. Um, but if you happen to have run across these, these are just some of the things that you can use to help you help yourself. I would never tell you to go out and buy these. I'm telling you right now, my rating system, when it means fucking poopy, it's fucking bad. So again, guys, avoid these magazines. Uh, it really is quite a tragedy too, because I'm one of those guys that likes to think or to likes to believe that there are, there, there are cheap options out there that actually do work relatively well. And I guess you could say this works relatively well, but not, not well enough to warrant its price. So I'll keep it. I'm not going to blow it up. I'm just going to use it for what it is um, and what I specified before. So again, guys, you've seen reviews on, on these magazines um, on YouTube. Well, there's only a couple exist, and there's really two I want to point out. One of them, actually, the guy has trouble, problems actually seating the magazine in the gun without any ammunition in it, which really should tell you something about the quality of the magazine. 
The next review is made by Guns.com, and while I like the review sometimes, that particular review on this magazine is fucking bullshit. They actually said that this magazine was the first real competitor to the PMAG. Really? Really? This piece of shit is the first real competitor to the PMAG? Are you fucking high? Maybe a Lancer? Hell, even a Tabco is fucking better than this thing. But the first real competitor to a PMAG? The first real competitor to a PMAG is a GI magazine. I don't even know why that wasn't even on their radar, but apparently not. So, when you see that review, guys, um, you should probably not listen to it, because it's fucking bullshit. And I don't like calling out people on YouTube. I, I really, really don't. Uh, I think Guns.com does kind of some cool videos. The presentation style is a little bit weird. Uh, if you've seen them, you, you know what I mean. Um, but sometimes you got to call people on their shit and don't listen to them in, in, in that sense. These, these are not good to go. These are not a replacement for a PMAG, not even a replacement for a GI magazine. So guys, I said my piece. Uh, let me know if you have any experiences with these particular magazines. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, it was a really, really fun series to do this, uh, just testing out new stuff. Even if it ends up being crap, it still produces content, which is always great. Okay, guys, so uh, like, comment, subscribe. This is Dave from TSI, and have a good one.